Howdy. Sobek came out e two yesterday. Two, I guess since it's going to be past midnight, it'll likely be two days ago as of when this video comes out. But Kuba Sobek's out, and it's pretty good, I gotta say. I've tested it fairly thoroughly. This video's coming out a little late because I got crazy sick, but here it is. So, first, we'll compare it directly to the Sobek. Now, other than a stat increase, it's actually exactly the same as the, the Sobek, right? Other than the, the progenitor as well. It's got slightly higher range, about 20% higher range, right? No, 25% higher range. It's got, wait, is that 20? Yeah, 25% on the low and 33% on the high. Anyways, higher range. Almost double the crit chance, slightly higher crit multiplier from 2 to 2.3. Higher status per projectile from 16.2 to 21. And the overall damage went up about... 10% or so, right? Actually, yeah, exactly 10%, not counting the progenitor from 350 to 385. Other than that, that's pretty much it, right? So once you add the progenitor in, though, and you get it, if you max out 60%, that's base damage. So it's actually going to end up being more like 70% more damage than the Sobek, which is a pretty hefty amount, to say the least. But it doesn't really matter too much right or at least when you're taking it with Saren. but i'm going to be showing it with without Saren, right so the gun itself is significantly better hang on we're not going to want to be set for here trinity that's who i usually go with for nothing on them voila so as you can see acid shells works that was the big question is will acid shells be able to be put on the kuva sobek because when kuva heck came out it could not use the augment neutralizing justice, um, but as you can see, it can now. In the patch notes for the updates that came out two days ago, they changed it so you can now put scattered justice on the Kuva Heck. So I will be making a Kuva Heck video pretty soon, and you can get some absurd multi shot on this because when this first came out, you couldn't put scattered justice on it, and when it first came out. Shock and Vendetta didn't exist, so you can get some ungodly multi-shot. Plus, it has a Ribbon Dispo 3. Kind of insane, but back to the Sobek. So yeah, Acid Shells works on it. You can also put the new Augment on once it's available, right? Because you're going to have to rank up your Nightwave. It is right here. Clip Delegation. On reload, the next magazine has status chance and multi-shot increased by 15% per shot landed with the current magazine max 15 stacks now i don't know if that's going to be affected by multi-shot if it is that's going to be way too easy to keep up but if it's not then it will take some effort to keep active still though it's going to be a very very big damage increase because if you're at max stacks that's an extra 225 percent multi-shot and status chance which is fairly hefty to say the least right and it only takes seven mod capacity but even without it, the gun is still pretty insane. I think Acid Shells is still definitely worth putting on it. It's a very, very strong mod. So, I have a Cold Progenitor, and it is at 44.9%. It is currently built for when I'm using it with Saren and Toxic Lash. I keep hitting back too much, right? But if you wanted to go with a Hunter Mumu build, which is what we'll do here. So, we got Crit Chance, Crit Damage... Fire rate, because fire rate does help a lot, has very poor fire rate, and the Kuva version doesn't have better fire rates. Galvanized Hell, of course, for multi-shot. Galvanized Savvy, which is additive on this weapon, but it's still very strong. Toxic Barrage, which mixes with cold to be able to make it into viral damage. And then Acid Shells and Hunter Munitions. For the Arcane, I would just go with Shotgun Vendetta, if you have it, for the reload speed and multi-shot. The reload speed helps a lot, and the multi-shot's obviously more damage. But if you don't have Shotgun Vendetta, you can always go, like, Primary Merciless or something else. I only have Vendetta rank 2, but it's fine. Then Galvanize Acceleration's nice to give it more range, because you don't really have much ammo problems, or at least not in my experience. So, first, we will show it. Wait, I have to reset these enemies. We'll show it with the Hunter Munitions build. It's obviously going to need to build up stacks before it starts doing the big PP damage. 
It's really annoying how it flinches the mag, making it hard to hit subsequent headshots, but it's not that big of a deal most of the time. So now it's going to start being able to do even more damage. After we build up our stacks enough, it should be able to kill in one shot, I think, I want to say. Oh, uh, we are... Okay, this is the last one. Okay, one shot. And it's that shot. Yeah, that should... Oh, no, that's barely going to not kill. Dang, almost. Well, if you were to get enough crits, it could definitely kill. Part of the problem is that it doesn't have guaranteed crit chance. It's only at, what, 63? No, 60%, I think. So if you were to have Arcane Avenger, it would massively increase your damage because you would have guaranteed crits giving you much more slash box. But it's still quite strong nonetheless. I mean, it's doing some big damage. You can see Acid Shells doesn't really do almost anything against armored units. But if we were to, say, strip their armor, which is pretty much always required when you're using Acid Shells, or at least without any other buffs. Here, we'll switch to Hildren. This is what we have on. All we'll be doing is stripping the armor. Wait a second, I totally forgot to reset the enemies. There we go. So I can strip their armor and then kill them. And it, you can see it did way more damage now, right? 40k to this guy. 36k. It does have damage drop off. Wait for them to die. It's got pretty good range though. Even with the damage drop off, the damage it spreads is quite strong. You can see it's like, I haven't even touched these guys, and they're almost dead. And this is just Acid Shells at base. But if you're not armor stripping or using Saren, Acid Shells might be better replaced by the new Augment when it comes out. Now, if you were to use this build and you wanted to put the Augments in, I'm not quite sure what I would suggest replacing. If you can outsource Fire Rate, then actually I would say get rid of Amalgam Shock and Barrage. Otherwise, you could just get rid of Galvanized Hell if you really want to keep Acid Shells, because this actually will give, what, 122? This will give almost the exact same amount of multi-shot as the Augment Wheel, except this does not give status chance, and this requires kills, whereas the other one just requ requires landing hits. Plus, you'll already have a ton of multi-shot with Shock and Vendetta if you're using it as well. Now, if you were to use it on Saren, then... It, of course, is still going to do some very chonky damage. Where? Oh, wait. Uh, duh, I'm looking through my weapons. I was like, why can't I find Saren? Now, this is going to be skewed quite heavily, to be honest, because I have too much investment on my Saren. I've got... See, that's just casting speed, but these... So I can full strip two Emerald Strip Archon Shards for Crosis stacks. But then I have two Tau Forged for Toxin damage on the status effect itself, right? So my Toxin status effects deal 90% more damage, which is quite huge. You don't need this at all, though. It's a broken combination regardless. I just did that because I felt like it. So Toxic Lash, if you didn't know, I know most people already know of this. It's super insane. It adds a separate instance of damage to your weapon for every shot it shoots. And that instance of damage is 30% of the weapon's damage. And it scales with strength. So it applies that on every single extra shot. So, right, if I'm doing multi-shot, then, yeah, it'll work for every single shot in the shotgun barrage. Or the, the multi-shot of the shotgun. It takes into account pretty much everything on the weapon, right? So crit chance and crit damage, that's going to affect it. Multi-shot, obviously, because then there's more shots for more damage. Base damage affects it. Elemental damage affects it, even if it's not toxin damage. So... We can show, for example, if I first will reset the enemies, simulate, I cast Toxic Lash, I go in, you can see the Toxin procs are for like 2 or 3 or 1, right? They're, un they're very, very low, unbelievably low, because we have no mods on. But if I come back in here, and I put on, say, Charged Shell, right? Where is it? 90% more damage, and then I cast Toxic Lash again, and I go back in. Now, you can see it's pretty consistently doing higher, right? Instead of 1s, it's 2s. Instead of 2s, it's 4s. 
it's because it takes into account the damage of the weapon after all the mods are applied. But then you can actually make it do more damage though. So the toxic procs from toxic lash, because it has a guaranteed status effect when it applies toxin, right, on the hit. So it will make a toxin status effect. Now that status effect can have its damage increased via putting toxin on specifically, okay? If you, like, the extra hit will always deal extra damage, but the status effect is only going to deal more damage if you have extra toxin on the weapon, right? As opposed to other elements. I'm pretty sure crits and damage still affect it as well, but, like, charge shell will increase the damage of the toxic lash hit, but it's not going to increase the damage of the toxic status effect dot, right? But... Something that's kind of insane is Bane mods. I mean, they're already pretty insane in general. Where is a Bane mod? Okay, like let's say we use Cleanse Grenier. So this is going to apply the damage, the Bane damage, on the extra hit of the Toxic Lash. Or wait, no, it's going to apply first the bonus damage on the weapon's hit itself. Okay, so if this was maxed out, it'd be times 1.3. The Toxic Lash damage goes after every buff on the weapon. So that extra 1.3, it takes into account. But then the Bane mod applies to the Toxic Lash hit itself, double dipping. So if it was 100, it's 100 times 1.3 on the weapon hit, and then times 1.3 again on the Toxic Lash hit. And then, because it double dips on dots normally, it will actually triple dip, 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 triple dip on the Toxin proc. So the Toxic status effect will be the damage of the weapon, right? or depending on the damage or the multi shots of the mods, right, you, the normal stuff, times 1.3, then the Toxic Lash damage takes that, times 1.3, and then the Toxic Stas effect damage from Toxic Lash takes that and multiplies it by 1.3 again. So that's, that's a lot of damage. Banes are so freaking effective for this. That being said, they're completely unnecessary. Our damage is so insane, you don't even need that extra damage. And I hate having to put Bane mods on. So I pretty much just ignore that and pretend it doesn't exist. Now, the main reason people care for Toxic Clash is because it applies said damage effect on any source of damage, regardless of what it is. With, like, a couple exceptions, but just about everything it will apply to, including Acid Shells. So Acid Shells deals 450 damage on enemy death, corrosive damage, not a corrosive status effect, just the damage type, plus 45% of the enemy's max HP in a 15 meter radius. So if you kill the enemy, if the enemies are close enough to take full damage, they'll only take nearly half their health if it, you killed an enemy that's like the same value of HP. But we want it to be able to one-shot. So with this, it'll apply the extra damage of our weapon with Toxic Lash, right? So right now, my strength, that 59% extra damage is going to be applied to the damage of asset shells, which is 45% of the enemy's max HP. So that's going to increase our damage of it substantially. Then it's also going to make it so that our asset shells applies the DOT of toxin. Then on top of that, the build I'm using with Saren has Roar. You can also use Zada's Whisper. That's arguably better, but I like I, I prefer Roar and I don't have Zada's Whisper yet. <laughs> but Roar will then give you more damage, which affects the damage of the weapon as well as acid shells. And it the dots from Toxic Lash on acid shells on the weapon itself, which also then, you know, double dips on that. And since it's a faction mod, it's triple dipping on it because of Toxic Lash, right? So even crazier damage. As you can see, we're going to, or what you'll see soon, we're going to completely decimate the enemies over here. Now I'll explain why the Kuba Sobek is actually not really better than the normal Sobek most of the time, or at least because most people use it with Saren. So we'll cast that, then we cast Roar, I'm gonna cast my one, then I'll also cast this for Venom Dose, strip the enemy's armor, and now it's going to start spreading, and as soon as their armor gets fully stripped, they're all dead, yeah, see, so like, it's, it's pretty insane, it doesn't take that much to decimate the group of enemies like that and what's really nice is i don't believe i could be wrong but i'm fairly certain the damage from toxic lash on acid shells 
takes into account the full damage acid shells would do rather than the damage it does, like when it does less damage to an enemy at the end of the radius rather than near the epicenter, if it's doing less damage, it's still going to do the full toxic lash damage anyways. So that's quite nice. But the reason Sobek is pretty much the same as Kuva Sobek here is because none of these stats really matter. I mean, we're going to be able to do more damage to kill the enemy, right? Like, killing the first enemy is going to be way easier, of course. But if you're already getting so many buffs and you can kill enemies just fine because you have all of this shit, then it doesn't really matter, especially because acid shells, this is a separate damage instance from whatever your stats are here, okay? None of this shit matters. This is all irrelevant. Your crit chance, your crit damage, your status, all of that stuff is irrelevant when it comes to Toxic Lash and Acid Shells together. So, you don't really need it. And I can show where is the normal Sobek that it, either way, it's going to kill the enemy, no problem. So, we'll put this on just so it's fair. This is not the same build. Hang on, what's different here? What is it I'm supposed to change? Take off this, crit chance, crit damage, fire rate, acid shells. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I forgot. We have to have, you are actually saving a mod, but again, because it that's only for the first enemy, so it doesn't really matter. So we would have this, so we have cold, and then we would slap on this mod so that we have viral, but that's not going to affect this for, or acid shells pretty much at all. I'm stuttering way too much right now. So now we'll respawn the enemies, cast Toxic Clash, cast Roar, cast our one augments, then we cast this, shoot them so it starts spreading everywhere. Um, I know that looks like it killed even better than the Kuva Sobek, but it's because I didn't wait until they are all armor stripped with the Kuva Sobek. But yeah, the the Sobek's actually pretty much exactly the same if you're using it on Saren after the first enemy kill. But as you saw, I mean, killing the first enemy with the absurd amount of buffs we have is pretty much free. Like, you can go with with this. This is even the highest investment build, right? And no ribbon. Sobek, normal Sobek with Saren can easily kill level cap enemies. So you don't really need the extra damage. So if you're going Saren and you want to fully optimize the damage on the Toxic Lash and the Corrosive Shells, Sobek is actually better than Kuva Sobek. Because if we look at Kuva Sobek again, the biggest problem here is this Riven Disposition. Now, if you don't have a Riven, yeah, that's irrelevant. But the Riven Dispo is a fat one, okay? That's obviously not very good. But the Disposition on the normal Sobek is five. That's massive. So, you can get better ribbons. Now, I know I said the stats don't matter on the weapon itself, but they do in one regard. Corrosive, or sorry, not corrosive, toxin damage to affect the toxin status effect from acid shells and toxic lash. So, you actually want as much toxin as you can get. So, this build isn't optimal. Actually, you kind of fucked this up. If you wanted to go all in, you'd actually go double to uh, toxin mods here, right? So we would go Contagious Spread and Toxic Barrage to maximize the damage for Acid Shells. And you can do this on Kuba Sobek, but on Sobek we could get a Riven with like plus 150, 200% Toxin damage. And that's going to give us way more damage on the status effect from Toxic, from Acid Shells and Toxic Lash. So you're actually getting less damage if you have a ribbon with toxin if you use the Kuva Sobek over the normal Sobek. Now, you might be thinking, well, can't I go a toxin progenitor, which will increase the damage of acid shells? No. Only modded toxin damage will affect the toxic lash status effect proc, okay? Base damage of the weapon will not affect it because the damage is coming from acid shells, the explosion, okay? It's only going to affect the bonus damage you get from the direct hits with the weapon, right? So your progenitor cannot increase the damage of Toxic Lash from Acid Shells specifically. I have to stress that part. So yeah, if you're as the highest investment and you want to be as optimal as possible, Sobek, the normal version, is actually still better and worth keeping. So don't get rid of your normal Sobek, or at least if you care about that. 
Otherwise, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Honestly, you could get rid of it if you just want to save space because the damage difference is so minor that it doesn't even matter, right? Just, like, use whichever one you have with Saren. Either way, it's going to kill. And if you don't have a Riven, then, yes, Kuva Sobek would be better. And the thing about Kuva Sobek is it's better at killing shit if you're not using Saren, right? Like, if you're just using the weapon itself, you're definitely going to want a normal mods, like a normal build to kill shit, which is better if you have better stats. So, Kuva Sobek, very good weapon. Not really a buff to Saren in Sobek, but a nice buff to Sobek as a weapon in general for any sort of Warframe. So if you're using it with someone else, then it's actually going to be a lot easier to kill stuff now. So, like, if I'm running around and I just want to play Trinity or somebody that's not giving me any sort of buffs, I'm actually going to be able to kill shit now. And you can still make it nuke enemies. Like, if they're flesh enemies, you can apply Viral with Pans of Vulpophila. So, we'll do that. Go back in. And I forgot, you still are going to need Armor Strip. Without Armor Strip, you're pretty much fucked. There we go. Now we go in. Armor Strip the enemies. Hands of Opophila is going to do its thing. We're going to wait until the viral starts spreading, right? It should start spreading on its own, or am I going to need to... I probably need to hit the enemy, right? But we do that, start spreading all the viral procs to all the enemies, and now it's, our acid shells is going to totally nuke them, right? Now that's still something that normal Sobek can do, except now we can actually freaking kill the enemy, because killing enemies with normal Sobek without all of the Saren buffs is actually a pain because its stats fucking suck. Whereas, you know, the Kuva Sobek, if you have a max progenitor, it's like 70% higher base damage. You can get a base element of cold so you can build like Viral or some something without having to go two mods for it. It's got nearly double the crit chance, higher crit damage, higher status chance. It's just, it's much better. But that's, that's pretty much it, I'd say, for the Kuva Sobek. It's just a nice upgrade. There's nothing fancy about it. It's not as snazzy of an upgrade as Galaxion, right, Tenet Galaxion, but it's still a very good weapon, and I highly recommend getting it. It's very fun, very satisfying, and does amazing damage. Now, before I go, if you want to know where to get Acid Shells, this drops from the boss on Senda. Tella the Thame, I think she's called. You have to have Arena Tokens, a fighter. It's got, like, a 1 in 9 chance to drop, something like that, because she drops a ton of different augments. Then, in case you're wondering, this is my Saren fashion. It's pretty straightforward, very, very basic, but I quite like it, and I have no sigils on. So yeah, that's going to be it. If you enjoyed the video, then subscribe or like the video. That'd be great. We also have a Discord now, so if you go to my channel, it should be in the description. Adios.